We can't hear Fran. Oh, sorry, there everyone. We are. We're back. I'm back. Apologize for that. Welcome to Appliance Advisors with Yale Appliance. I'm joined as always by Dennis McDonald. How are you doing this week, Dennis? Dennis? Doing great, Fran. Doing great. So, very excited this week, as we mentioned kind of a couple weeks ago. So, this week we're joined by Andrew, who is a sales and marketing manager for True Residential. And now we're really excited about the brand True, and we've talked a lot about them during uh, some of our podcasts here about really some of the new product that's coming into the kitchen, the bar area, what they're doing with color. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of kind of what their process is, what they're seeing for trends. And as we mentioned last week, kind of coming off KBiz, some of the new colors and uh, products that they're excited to launch. So, Andrew, uh, thanks for joining us this week on Appliance Advisors. How are you today? Doing well. Thank you, Fran. Glad to be here and glad to uh, catch up with y'all and talk appliances. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you. All right, yeah, so I, I, do, I do think uh, True is kind of an interesting story because, you know, there's been other brands that have tried to come from the commercial that, you know, if anyone knows, has, everyone knows the brand True. I don't even say if you've ever been to a restaurant and you've looked around or sat at maybe a bar and, 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 and looked around or, just you know, you see it everywhere. It's a commercial kind of icon brand that kind of has a major legacy in that space and dominates the refrigeration on the commercial side. We've seen other appliance companies try to make the leap from commercial to residential. And honestly, I don't know of one that's ever been able to do it. Um, mainly because that customer experience is very different. One is a business and it's less about aesthetic and more about functionality and just working and being a workhorse. And then on this side of things, especially on the premium side where a lot of the true product is, um, you know, fit and finish matter, customer experience matter. But, you know, I've known Andrew for a lot of years. He was really, he's been kind of right at the very beginning uh, with this whole journey for True Residential. And I think they've probably been the one brand that I'm most excited about because they actually get the high end experience and their momentum is only growing. So it's great to have Andrew on and, and, and some of the things we saw in Cape is if you've seen our teasers uh, just from our time down there. You know, True got a lot of spotlight because honestly, the product is differentiated and it's 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 compelling and it's innovative. So, with that, Andrew, let's let's get into everything True today. Yeah, great Absolutely. segue. So, first question really is, you know, what exactly is the difference between True Commercial versus True Residential? I I mean, I think Dennis summed it up pretty well in the uh, in the intro there, talking about you know what is the workhorse of the commercial kitchen. I mean, that's what we're known for on the commercial side. But um, if I can use a car analogy, it's a lot like the uh, the very standard work truck you'd see on a job site. You know, no bells and whistles. You got the crank windows on it. You know, it's really about functionality. Can we bring things down to temperature as fast as possible? Hold it there really accurately on the commercial side because you're dealing with case goods on simplified shelves. It's really about uh, just the, the raw functionality of the unit. Um, but Dennis mentioned uh, the residential side of things <clears throat> is a lot more that luxury experience. It, uh, you know, soft clothes on drawers, front lighting with LEDs. Um, it's the all stainless interior, the multicolor lighting that we have on the residential refrigerators. All of that has to be in play while not losing that performance story that we're known for on the commercial side. If I look at, you know, most of the units out there um, that that don't have kind of the commercial heritage we have, um, a, a pro style refrigerator or commercial style refrigerator for, for most of the folks out there means like a bigger hinge and a louvered grill and some stainless steel. We come at that completely differently where it's really about like forcing air throughout the cavity of the unit, bringing it down to temperature more accurately and holding it there. But again, in that residential space, it has to like all the details have to be there, the fit and finish, the feel of things, the feel of the handle, the way the hinges look. Um, you know, our custom colors and hardware, all of that has to express what a designer is trying to accomplish in that luxury kitchen. Um, and, and then just the joy of using it as a homeowner who loves to cook. And that's, that's really what we've tried to do. Yeah. And you definitely see it, you know, we talk about being a, you know, a commercial company and kind of coming into residential and one of the, you know, obviously true started in residential really kind of with under counter units, under counter wine, beverage centers, kegerators, things like that. You know, one of the first things that you really noticed too, when the, the, the brand first came to residential was, you know, it still kind of has that commercial heritage where it's stainless steel inside, stainless steel interior, 
three-year parts and labor warranty, indoor and outdoor rated. So you can see that, you know, you don't lose a lot of that kind of commercial build where you're still trying to kind of make it for the homeowner, but you definitely don't go away from that kind of commercial heritage, if you will, there. Right. We're really excited as well. Actually, when we moved to R600 refrigerant, that's kind of the new refrigerant that most manufacturers have moved to. I know you all have talked a lot about mm -hmm. it. Um, when we did that with our full size equipment and with our under counters, we've actually gone through the process now of bringing all of our residential equipment to the same commercial standards of uh, refrigeration that all of our commercial equipment goes through. So there's a, <clears throat> an industry standard um, to declare things food safe, to make sure that they're safe for uh, commercial restaurants to use, they're powerful enough, they're going to keep food at the proper temperature. I think we're the only residential brand ever to pursue that certification on residential equipment so that it is dual rated. Residential uh, standards are all about energy efficiency, and we want to be there on energy efficiency, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we have that commercial quality as well. So it really is kind of a unique story for us. Yeah, I, I will say it brings me back to when they pitched this line, when you guys brought it on and said, hey, will you carry this line? I said, man, another under-counter beverage cooler, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's loaded in there. And there's some power names in that under-counter space. And then, then there's these really inexpensive ones we all see at Home Depot. And it's like, okay, I looked at it all and I said, well, what's going to be your story? And you guys gave an analogy of like, I think it was, I'll screw it up, but it was outdoors in a desert, ambient temperature was like 110 degrees, say, and you could, if you loaded that up with cases of, at the time, you, it may have been beer, or maybe I imagined it was beer, because <laughs> enjoy an occasional beverage, um, you know, but that it could get it ice cold in under a certain amount of time, and we tested it, and it's true. The thing that, you know, always had us excited and when people say what is truly the best under counter brand we always do say true is much because there's two consumers there or not, not maybe two but there's there's two that we think about is one that says hey i want it just for the look and i want it as inexpensive as possible and then anyone else put it in there probably really wants to use it and they got to start thinking about okay when do you really use these units well when they really matter is when you have people over and you have a party over and you know, in an hour, 15, 20 times, there's people getting in there and grabbing a beverage or heck, you can put uh, platters of food in, in some of these units. So, you know, but that in and out aspect is where these less powerful compressors really fail. And we all can know that, hey, I got an ice cold drink, but my buddy five open and closes from now got one that's really warm because the compressor couldn't keep up. The true does. And that's back to its commercial roots of like, in a, in, a, in a restaurant or in a bar, you know, a warm drink would not be acceptable. So I think you've really dovetailed into that well. And, and the, the bigger thing for us is because we're, we're a big tester of these things. The reality is it really, really works. So if you're somebody out there that says, hey, I want something that, to Andrew's point, is about food preservation or, or uh, keeps the things coldest uh, as fast as they can to cold and then keep them cold throughout a, a heavy use period of time, and really that commercial kind of quality, it really, really does what it says it does. And that's what got us hooked. And now we can talk about everything else in True because it really started there for us and for True Residential. And now we're talking about these refrigerators, which honestly, these built-in refrigerators that you saw us blog and talk about that have us so excited because now we're really able to sink our teeth into some differentiated, beautiful product that is truly kind of first to market style, fit, feel, finish. Um, so it's kind of been a really, really quick story, but backed mm -hmm. by a company that's like well over 100 years old in heritage. So it's kind of, kind of cool to see. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that's really the strength that we lean on is, is you know, we, we have some of the best engineers and, and research and development uh, teams out there. Um, and then the manufacturing to really back it up. It's all in the state of Missouri. Um, you know, within kind of 45 minutes or an hour of St. Louis, Missouri, our four factories and uh, everything's made there. We know how to do it. Uh, and we've been doing it for, like you said, an extremely long time, over 75 years now, we've been making commercial refrigeration. So, so yeah. Awesome. 
So cool. one, you know, the next thing, and we've talked a lot about color in the kitchen, what a huge trend that's been over the last couple of years. And certainly that's been a huge part of True's growth story has been color and incorporating that into your under counter and full size refrigeration. So what's happening with color in the kitchen? What are some of the trends? What colors are homeowners and designers asking for? What are you seeing there? Yeah, I, I think this is awesome. And it's a, it's about personalization. Um, I think uh, the, the trend we've seen over the past kind of, I don't know, 15, 20 years is the, the worst thing you can do these days from like a design or a style or fashion aspect is look like the next person, you know, like uh, and, and really being able to do something unique and execute a kitchen or a design or a home that is specific to you, the way you live, the way you cook, the way you uh, like to be in your space. Uh, is is what this is all about and kind of the extension of that is if you if you talk to designers today and you tell them that you want uh, and I don't mean to knock anybody's kitchen who might be listening today but if you go to a designer and say you want an all-white kitchen with shaker style cabinets the designer will be like yeah I've, I've done 150 of those in the last two years they're gonna they're gonna be a little tired of it from a from a design standpoint and uh, kitchens don't have to be white. They don't have to be boring. Um, you can do something really exciting. So we've had um, <clears throat> designers really push us on this. Um, we launched our colors in 2017 and we launched just a, a few colors and we expected it. Like I, I could tell you, I was in the room. Uh, we were like, this will be five to 10% of our sales. You know, it'll be a cool thing we can do because we have our own powder coating facilities. We'll be able to powder coat these units and do something really unique. And maybe five to 10% of our customers will take us up on it. Well, like really quickly, those numbers just dramatically increased. And now on our full size equipment, it's over half of what we make is customized in a color and hardware finish because it's designers who are coming to us and saying, hey, I want this, I want that. Give us a new color, give us a green, give us a blue. Uh, that we can uh, incorporate into these different designs. And so, you know, we've just tried to be good listeners to the market out there and say, if this is what's demanded, if this is what's desired, what can we offer uh, to these designers to have a tool? So in this photo you pulled up, you know, this is our Sage Green that we launched last year uh, at KBiz. And like immediately we started seeing customers respond just so favorably. Having that light, soft green to add to their kitchens to bring a pop of color without it being like super heavy handed, just a really soft uh, kind of Sage Green has been really big. We also have people doing more dramatic uh, stuff. I know, uh, Fran, if you go to the next, uh, photo I sent you. Um, there's some really beautiful, bold kitchens that are still incorporating neutrals like this white. And uh, they, they used our pewter hardware on this one to really kind of play off of all the black accents in the kitchen. You know, they did black windows. They have that beautiful black custom wine shelving there on the left. Um, all the veining in the stone there. It's just designers have gotten really creative with how they're going to execute this. And doing something again that's white, uh, but there's so much color and there's so much character in this um, that they've they've kept the kitchen from being uh, stale or boring um, with with the way they've used all this. So we're we're just excited to be able to um, kind of marry up to what designers are pushing us to do uh, and and provide some colors and finishes that they've been able to use in some really beautiful designs. Oh, I love this butler's pantry on the left here. That's in a uh, Virginia Beach uh, show home that uh, a partner, Stephen Alexander Homes, did. They do beautiful custom homes. And they put this um, cobalt refrigerator into their butler's pantry. They uplit the ceiling with some blue LED lighting. Um, and when they did the home tour, just like customer after customer walking through on this home tour was like, how do I get that blue fridge? You know, just one after another, after another. And, um, you know, they've, they've come back to us and said, they've, they've had a, a large number of requests as a custom home builder of like, Hey, we need that Butler's pantry. We want to incorporate that beverage column. So, um, it's just one of those things that people see it and gravitate towards it. And then our matte black on the right there, like, that's just a, I think that's probably my favorite finish that we do. Our ultra matte black is super sleek, um, very sophisticated execution there with kind of the the, the great symmetry uh, on either side of the range. So great to see what designers have used uh, used us for. And 
again, our, our response to this is we have people coming to us on a regular basis saying like, what else can we do? Um, so we've really tried to expand our offering in that front of, of how we help people out in that way. Yeah, that's great. And some really kind of cool concepts there, which kind of leads us into the next thing. You know, we talked yesterday a lot about, you know, we all the time you're hearing about kitchen flow and how you should design your kitchen and the kitchen triangle and all those things. But it's funny with so many people doing bar areas or a, a nook area with a, you know, a nice maker and a beverage center, you know, what are some of the trends you see there and, and how should people plan for a flow in a home bar versus, you know, just their normal kitchen? Like what, what, what kind of ideas or unique ways do you, do you give customers kind of um, to be able to design their areas like that? Yeah, we've talked to designers a lot about this and I, you know, I think a, a big movement happened here during COVID. Uh, people said, maybe I can't go out to my favorite bar, but I want to have my friends over and I still want to make a killer cocktail. You know, they love wine. They wanted to serve something. They did more entertaining at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, like, what? What can I do to convert? And so we saw everything from, you know, full bars where they were trying to recreate their favorite bar from a restaurant. And that's one way to go. Um, and we've spoken to some di designers who've really helped us understand um, a different concept for that as well. Uh, what we've seen a lot of people do is put that bar in the way of their guests and all the alcohol and kind of recreate their favorite commercial bar. Mm -hmm. And in some ways that's really fun and I love it. And if that's what they want to do, like by all means, that's their home. I'm not going to stop them. But one of the things about commercial bars is you have a dedicated server and you're intentionally trying to separate the customer from the product because there's a transaction happening. And then a lot of times when you go to a bar, you might know one or two people and you end up sitting shoulder to shoulder as opposed to face to face. In a home bar, though, you kind of have a different mentality of like, well, you know who's coming over. You're probably not trying to keep them from your from your alcohol and from your beverages. And, and maybe you don't have a dedicated server. You know, I, I would love a, a home bartender at my own parties, but you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm the mixologist, mm -hmm. you know? And so maybe it's a lounge or something where the, the seating is integrated in a space where it's more accessible. And, uh, and we've seen that created as well. Actually on the next slide, there's a, there's a, a really cool lounge concept. This isn't actually our refrigeration. I'll, you know, I'll give a shout out to those who, uh, to use someone else's brand mm -hmm. here, but I love this lounge concept because you can see, people gathering together, facing each other. You're not preventing someone from grabbing one of those many, many bottles there to make kind of their, their own concoction. And um, what a different concept. If you go back one step too, the other thing we've seen a lot of people do is this picture on the right is they've taken a, like a coat closet that wasn't used or some people have converted like an extra bedroom into like a study or a lounge. And then it has that closet and like, what are you using that closet for? Well, they rip the door off, they finish the trim and boom, they throw in an under counter fridge, maybe a bar sink. And all of a sudden you have this really cool bar nook out of a space that you didn't have to like remodel or move walls for. You just reclaim some space and said like, what can we do here to create an entertainment venue? And then boom, they have a, they have a really cool lounge or kind of, you know, their own little speakeasy in their house. And we, we've seen some people do some just really, really cool stuff that way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is, oh, that was a killer lounge. That's in New York. Um, they, it's a little harder to see, but on the back unit there, there's a, there's a dual tap beer dispenser in here as well. And so you just get this great lounge environment where uh, you can really see your guests enjoying each other's company as opposed to, you know, all sitting shoulder to shoulder, staring at a TV or something, you know, it's a, it's a different execution in a home bar when you're really trying to gather your friends together and spend some time to just hang out and maybe enjoy some libations. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we talk a lot about bars. I mean, one, Oh, look at this one. I mean, Jesus, who doesn't want yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't invited. That's our ultra map black. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I say this, we're showing a lot of bar areas, but you know, as much bar indoor outdoor is ice. And, you know, we talk, we don't talk about it. We haven't really talked about it yet, but that was a, a unit that you've had. Continue to perfect, 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 perfect. And Andrew, if you would just for a second talk about your undercounter ice maker just for a moment, because ice is a big need. People are particular about the style of cube. They are particular about the production of the ice. So many times people buy these things just assuming it can fill up their cooler for maybe, 
if they had a boat or they have parties or when they need it, they need a lot of it. You guys have kind of tackled that and kind of set the standard. Talk to me about your new ice makers a little bit because we're talking about the whole bar thing. Yeah, we actually, we just relaunched um, our, our, we call it our D version ice machine. We made some significant upgrades. Uh, we did change the refrigerant to go to a hydrocarbon refrigerant, which is more environmentally friendly. We did a couple of things to use less water inside the unit so that we're more efficient with our water usage. All those things really important. But what you're talking about, I, I think is really key is how do we make sure when that homeowner opens the door, there's enough ice for them, them and, and for their guests that they're trying to entertain. So um, we did this all in house. Um, our own ice engineers did just amazing job uh, building this unit from the ground up. Um, and and we build it ourselves as, you know, I know a lot of people have another manufacturer create their ice machine for them, but this is something that we've always done um, in house. It makes 85 pounds of ice a day. Um, and just to put that in perspective, if you if you go to the grocery store um, and you grab one of those seven pound bags of ice, you're, you're looking at about a dozen of those bags. So uh, it, it really is a monster amount of production. Most people probably don't need 85 pounds of ice per day, but what they do need is a full bin. And what you mentioned of say boating or you know, taking a cooler to the soccer fields with your kids, uh, you know, for, for a day of the sports games, that's exactly the usage that you need the high production for. Cause what happens is you empty the bin out, you fill up the cooler, you take it to the, to the ball fields, and then you bring some teammates back with you and their families and you open the bin. And if you have a, a less expensive ice machine, you know, uh, something that doesn't have the production of the true, what's going to happen is you're going to be like doling out three ice cubes per person, you know, where in, in our unit, in just eight hours, you're going to completely fill a 28 pound bin. You're going to be able to load up every single person's drink. You're going to be able to have all the ice you want for, you know, whether it's cocktails, sodas, waters, you know, make, make margaritas, whatever you're going to do you're going to have the ice to be able to accomplish that and really entertain even if you emptied it out just that morning. So it makes a huge difference. Um, there's a couple of other things we did that are really novel on it that I especially love. They put magnets on the scoop. So it actually has a, what we call it a magnet scoop. It sits right on the door. So you never lose the scoop inside the ice, which is, you know, funny enough, one of the major complaints you get about a lot of ice machines yeah. is they lose the yeah. scoop. And then, um, we actually, uh, and, and this will sound funny, but we actually added lasers to it because we have a laser ice level. Um, and what it allows us to do is you can control how full you want the ice bin to be. Maybe you don't want a full 28 pounds. And it uses a laser level to determine that. And the important thing about that is it doesn't have that, uh, that metal bar on the side of it anymore, which most units have. They kind of, it, it's just temperature based. A lot of times when we see customers put these outdoors, which all of our ice machines are outdoor rated, when it's down at 40 degrees, what will happen is that bar will say, oh, it's cold enough. It must be full and it'll stop making ice. Ours will never do that. It'll actually look at the ice, see whether or not it's full and keep producing until it's completely full. So it, it really is a smarter system than using a uh, just a temperature check. Um, so a couple of things about it just really make a huge difference for that homeowner who loves to entertain, wants to use that ice machine all the time. Um, and then, like you said, it's a it's a important to have the right style of ice. Um, ours is a top hat shape and it's crystal clear. The, the way we filter the ice, uh, the water as it comes into the machine takes out a lot of the minerals and really gives you like a perfectly flavored ice cube where you're not going to be picking up extra flavors in your drink. So um, super key to being able to, to entertain and entertain well uh, and not buy some super expensive bourbon and then put an ice cube in there that's going to diminish the flavor of that. Uh, Listen, that, that it, it, like it, sounds, thing to it do. sounds crazy, but you nailed it. I mean, I've teed you up because it's one of our number one return categories are ice makers mm -hmm. mainly because it's it's a nicety right the folks that are buying it are saying wow either i really want it or you know geez uh can i afford it but they go for it and when they realize that it can't keep up with production when they realize the cubes don't hold in their drink long enough whether it's soda or a nice cocktail and it waters down immediately um it, it can't keep up with the production. And then that, that darn, um, the scoop, 
is buried. All these little things that are so <laughs> bring it up. You know, this was the one splurge they had or the one thing they needed and it just didn't perform. So, you know, you said it earlier and you said, you know, for the for the less expensive. The reality of it is when you're buying an ice maker, they all are expensive. I would say that for a little bit more money, you can get something that's a real workhorse that does all the things you'd ever want it to do um, and probably more. So that's why we're big on that true piece, just because it continues to it, it makes it easy for us. You just don't take them back for performance uh, after the fact that you sell them. So. Absolutely. And I see Edward asked a great question in the chat there. He said, what's the life expectancy of an ice machine? And Dennis, you can probably speak to that better, more broadly. Um, but I can speak to it at least with true, you know, um, we believe in our ice, ma ice machine so strongly that that we back it with the probably the best warranty out there on any ice machine that there is. It's three years parts and labor on everything. And then we actually go to six years parts and labor on the sealed system, which is really the guts of the machine that are making it produce ice and run. Um, so we, we really do believe it's important to stand behind the products that we sell and, um, and, and, you know, Yale is a great partner as a, as a self-servicing dealer. I think that's so important to make sure you have a great, you know, uh, servicer that's available because if something goes wrong you want it fixed immediately um and and our warranty guarantees that so we we really do stand behind it and that that warranty is true whether it's indoors or outdoors so we have units that are in south florida south texas you know and it carries that same warranty outside in an outdoor kitchen in some of the hottest areas of the country um and we know our units last so we're we're really proud to stand behind them I, i'll let you speak to the, yeah, the average I mean, life expectancy it, it, of an it's ice a great machine question. yeah it's a great question i will tell you this um the number one problem is that homeowners don't maintain them and you, you got to understand that buying an ice maker there is maintenance so you need to descale clean uh, every brand's different some are uh, true is actually very easy a lot of the other brands are a lot more involved you may need to take parts of soak them so on and so forth but historically you find that it's it, it's it's the homeowner just isn't maintaining it on a routine it's kind of like changing the oil in your car at some point something else is going to give and so that's what we see and particularly in new england they're harsh wet, harsh winters so if they're particularly outside and they don't take them in or they don't winterize or they don't do anything and they just expect it to turn on they have an issue We've gone so far that, you know, at least here for us at Yale, we have a, a routine service that you can just pay us and we automatically come out, bring the materials, clean your machine on a routine basis um, because a lot of folks don't want to have to deal with it. So we, you know, you can be as hands on or as hands off if you want to be with us. But I think the takeaway is regardless of any brand, you need to make sure you're maintaining your unit. And if you're asking me what that is, chances are you should call us and we should probably come out and maintain it for you one time. <laughs> yeah, it's something you should be doing uh, routinely. They all, they all need it. That will help determine its life expectancy. That's absolutely the smartest thing you can do is, is if you have a, a great partner, that's, that's the way to do it. I think most of our customers would be much happier if they had somebody else maintain the machine for them, um, you know, that helps them remember to do it, that had those reminders come out to them and it was just taken care of. So great question, Edward. Uh, you know, certainly thank you on that. Um, it's a, it's an important topic for sure. Sure. Yeah, we definitely know how passionate people can get on uh, ice makers. We've, we've had one or two questions over the, uh, <laughs> over the course of the show, for sure. Um, so last week, we, we broadcasted live from uh, KBiz, where Dennis was, and we know that True had a really large presence there as well. So we kind of want to get into a little bit about KBiz, what you guys had to offer there, new products, things like that. Um, and we're going to show like a, just a little video that True put together as well with uh, the time in KBiz. <laughs>
thanks for sharing that, guys. It, it brings me back to last week. It was a whirlwind. It was a lot of fun. So. That was. Yes, yeah, they, they had a, a fantastic, bit. a fantastic showing. It actually could prove to cost us a lot of money because there's some things I want to put in the store after seeing them. We have three, <laughs> three true displays, but you know, new finishes. You came out with the new blue, which was beautiful. Um, you know, I think it's and, and and like I love this shot. You know, one thing that I I think people just need to appreciate is a lot of times, you know, this idea of marrying fridges together or columns or refrigerators, nothing's better than this photo right here, right? So the thing that grabbed me on this is if you look, it's hard to see from this, we'll show others, but their toe kicks are integrated. Their toe kicks are color match toe kicks. That sounds simple. It's, it's the biggest question when you get to all of the brands of built-in refrigerators. So these look like when you put them together, they make sense and they make sense simply. And then on top, that top trim, that's I think 120 inch top trim on that to make that kind of a unified one piece unit. And those units are really just butted up against each other, intended to be this way. But with that unification kick and the kit and the toe kick, two things, honestly, as crazy as this looks, a really easy install and more so just the fit and finish come together with those types of details. So this is something that I just loved. And these are two 30 inch units, new 30 inch bottom freezers, one with the solid door on the left and one with the glass door on the right, and then flanked by a couple of wine coolers. And then that new color, what's that new color? Bluestone? What would, what'd you call that? New Bluestone. Color? Yeah, you got it right. That's perfect. So. Yeah, so really great. Um, this is in a satin nickel handle, but I mean, I, I think that would look good in. It could be look good in a brushed uh, brass. It could look good in a in a pewter. That would look good in a chrome. I mean, I think it's. This was a really cool color. I think you'd probably agree that could kind of take on a lot of different kitchen styles just based with hardware flexibility because the color set like that sage green kind of. It can morph. It could be dramatic. It could be muted. It could, could kind of takes on the form of the kitchen. Yeah, and I think that's really exactly what we heard from designers is we actually have we now have three colors that we kind of consider what we would say is half neutrals. There's a lot of influence of gray or like a softer undertone to them where um, they're not kind of like a full saturation, extremely bold color. We have a few of those as well for someone who wants to do something really daring in their kitchen. But this allows, you know, kind of the 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 entrance of color into the kitchen in a soft way that it, it, it it's kind of the star of the kitchen in a lot of ways or in a lot of kitchens that maybe it's a white kitchen and this really stands out but in something where they've done more bold cabinetry they're using a lot of color this can actually kind of drift right into that without drawing too much attention to itself so it really kind of plays in both of those spaces um and uh it the response we got from the designers who came through the booth was was overwhelmingly positive. You know, I, I don't think I heard anybody say they didn't like this color, um, you know, and and sometimes we've put out some polarizing colors in the in the past where people either love them or hate them, which is a fun thing to do as well. Um, but this one was just kind of universally accepted as just so usable in so many of the kitchens that are being developed today that bring in some of those really nice soft blue elements um, to, to expand people who maybe 10 years ago, they would have done the plain white kitchen, um, you know, without any kind of excitement to them. And they would have, they would have said they were doing it for resale value or something like this, but this lets them personalize it and do something really special. Um, and yeah, again, color, we were excited yeah. as well. No, go I, ahead, I was going to say we're excited as well to, uh, to launch the 120 inch kit, you know, we'd, uh, We'd had a 90 inch kit before, which was three of our columns and to go all the way to 10 feet in terms of just production, being able to put that on refrigerators and, and get that to a home, get it installed correctly. We had some things we wanted to work through to make sure that we could execute it perfectly. I mean, I think we have to ship that thing in a specially made crate because again, it's 10 feet long and we want it to arrive in pristine condition. So it really was kind of a feat to uh, to have us work through those extra details and the the execution is is what you get it it looks just amazing so yeah and i think i think for anyone listening saying listen obviously not everyone has 10 feet of wall to do these things the cool part is though that that fit and finish a toe kick and top trim is the same on a single unit as it would be two units you know they've continued to allow you to kind of expand on what's possible i guess and i think that's the thing i kind of like because it was a really dramatic way one if you could do it would be amazing no one would not like that but beyond that 
Um, you know, this idea of you have a lot of these big, you know, that's 60 inches in the middle. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of these French door refrigerators and these split door refrigerators, but this is real refrigeration space. Hard to pick up from here. You can actually put a sheet pan in, in, in a full catering sheet pan in true refrigerators, which is, which is great. You know, so again, back to kind of that commercial, but actual functional, when you're really entertaining the ability to fit bigger things in them. And if you start to look at some of the other built in refrigerators out there, try a sheet pan. I can assure you they don't fit. <laughs> yeah, that's a key observation. I uh, One of the things that, that, again, photos are hard to tell the difference on on our units, but we do stand proud of the cabinetry by about four inches. We have a beautiful trim piece that comes out, and then the door and the handle all are um, forward of kind of a standard cabinet cutout, and it does give you that added depth. What we've heard from homeowner after homeowner that we talk to um, is that a, a lot of the integrated columns out there, they just got really frustrated with without being like, you couldn't put a pizza box in it. You know, mm-hmm. they had pizza. They wanted to just throw the pizza box in the fridge and deal with it in the morning. You know, maybe they'd drop it into a more appropriate size container after that, but they, they couldn't do it. And so there was just a lot of like little frustrating ways that, that big families wanted to use a refrigerator and couldn't. And having that added depth brings that back. I think when people open our, um, you know, our, our drawer bins that are all stainless steel, they open them and pull them all the way out. They're full extension drawer bins. And they're like, holy cow, I can fit so much in there. They really have a strong, like, kind of emotional reaction to what they could do in our refrigerator, which I think is always, you know, it's, it's always great to see someone see it and realize it immediately and say, like, that's that's what I need because we never have enough space. We we always have too much, when, especially when people entertain, especially when they're having guests over and they've bought extra food from the grocery store. They come home ready to entertain and their their fridge is just stuffed to the gills and they don't have enough space for it. So well, that's really why you need one. Of, that's why you need one of these things here. Mm-hmm. This all beverage <laughs> cooler yep. because it certainly takes a curse off the fridge. But I will say, this was you know again a picture doesn't do it justice. If, if you are in our area, or if not, there's true dealers cross country, you should go see the finishes because this is an antique white that does not show in this photo nearly as beautiful as it is in reality. And the cool thing there that gets us, you know, you can do it with or without the lock. And if you see there, there is a lock on that. It's kind of hard to see to the right of the handle. And some people worry about those types of things. But the presentation, this, this thing is amazing. And then you have a dual kegerator, I mean... And that's an ice maker to the right. I mean, geez, there's a there's a, a party in a, a <laughs> five foot spot. <laughs> yeah, that's you're, that's exactly right. It's a ton of fun. That beverage column, um, we we get a ton of comments from homeowners on that. Uh, they just never seen anything like it. Um, it's hard to see in this space, but there's a pullout drawer on the bottom that can hold 30 wine bottles vertically. Um, and it's a full extension bin in the bottom and it has these great little dividers, make it really easy to store 30 bottles of wine or champagne or San Pellegrino or whatever else you might be storing right there in the bottom of that unit. And even if you had an open wine bottle, you can drop it right back in there, slide it back in, continue serving from it. So it really is a, a unique unit for uh, entertainment and people who love to entertain have, uh, have gone nuts for it. The, the thing you can do as a homeowner, when you put something like this or you put all three of these in one space, when your guest walks in the front door and they see that, like alarm bells go off in their head that like I am in the right place. Like I'm about to be well entertained and well cared for. Like this person wants to entertain me. And the cool thing is, as a host, you don't even have to open your mouth to do that. You you let them in, they see it, and they're like, "Yes, this is the place I want to be. We're gonna we're gonna have a great time." So uh, it's a fun thing to do as a designer for a homeowner or for a homeowner just to, to accomplish on their own. So it's really great. Yeah, talk, talk about this piece. This, this is another piece we saw that you know kind of kind of we 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 loved it because we we use these applications a lot. But but go ahead, tell us what we're seeing here. Yeah, this is actually our new low profile collection of um, under counter refrigerators. Um, They are ADA compliant, which is one of the uses for a low profile refrigerator Mm -hmm. is 
in a lot of, you know, luxury suites um, or multifamily spaces, a designer needs an ADA compliant unit for a lower countertop. But at the same time, the other thing that this enables is it, it allows designers to do some of the cabinet styles that they haven't been able to do with a standard under counter refrigerator. One of those things is integrated finger pulls. And it's a little hard to see on this image, but that kind of silver line right across the top above those units, mm -hmm. you can slide your fingers right in there, grab the integrated finger pull on those cabinets and mm -hmm. open them up. So that's not typically something you can do with an overlay unit because you have a door behind it. But because we can build above the door, you can still do a standard high countertop. Uh, you know, you don't have multiple levels of countertop going on inside the kitchen. You can do these really elegant executions of cabinetry because we have this low profile option. The other thing that um, this low profile unit will allow you to do is we can actually raise it up a couple of inches as well that brings it up to a standard height. And then it lets the designer or the cabinet maker really control that toe kick height. And there's some beautiful, uh, often European style cabinetry out there that has five or six inch mm -hmm. toe kicks that really has a different look and feel. And again, with a standard under counter, because of where the door hits and everything else, that's hard to achieve. But because we have this low profile collection, we're able to accomplish those designs and, and marry into them perfectly. So um, we've really had a great response from designers who have been frustrated in the past where they haven't been able to accomplish this. They have access to this now. And they say like, this is exactly what I needed because they were just leaving out refrigeration in spaces where they wanted to include it because they couldn't achieve the look they wanted. So now this is really a new, a new solution for them. So this is a ice machine in that low profile collection on the left, our fridge drawers right in the middle with that kind of beautiful medallion log pole in the center. And then um, a wine cabinet on the right. Um, so really a cool execution of what you can do. I think there's an open pick, um, is maybe the next slide shows all three of these units uh, open as well. Yeah. Yeah, there it is on the right. You can kind of see all three of them. So really cool. Again, neat execution for when you're having people over and entertaining. Um, being able to do the low profile collection, having that integrated finger pull on the cabinetry is just a, a cool execution. And again, it may not look like a ton, uh, you know, from the outside, but I'll tell you there's designers out there who are just so excited that they can achieve this look again by using uh, our units and, and the low profile collection or ADA collection, as you'll see it on our website, if you go to our website. Great point. This was, this was a really cool way as well. You know, again, uh, you can talk about it, Andrew, but the cabinets in the middle, how they, I mean, th yeah. those are appliances, right? Draws. Well, two, two out of the three are, that's exactly where Correct, we wanted right. it. Yeah. So those, those six, six drawers right in the middle there, um, you know, this is a partner of ours, John Michael Outdoor Kitchens uh, out of the Carolinas, who just does just stellar uh, outdoor cabinetry. They've done some just beautiful stuff. Um, and I think everybody has seen a really nice overlay piece on an indoor unit before. Like, that's mm -hmm. not a new magic trick to see that you hit a fridge behind a panel. But in the outdoor space, I think people haven't seen it as much. So the drawer on the right, the two drawers on the right is our under counter refrigerator. The two drawers on the left is our under counter freezer drawers. And then the two drawers in the center are John Michael's just dry cabinetry. It's just regular dry storage cabinet that they built for us. And they used their panels for all uh, three of these. And it really gives you that kind of seamless look. You don't know which one's a refrigerator and which one's not. I mean, obviously from this angle, we can see the toe kick has some venting yeah. for, the, uh, for the grill there, uh, but that's really the only tell. And if you were standing at it, you can't see the toe kick. So yeah. it, it gives you that seamless integration to be able to do an outdoor kitchen with kind of the same elegance and luxury that you'd see in an indoor kitchen. Um, and I think, Again, not, not that they're bad, but in outdoor kitchen spaces, we've seen a whole lot of stacked slate stone, and we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, stainless steel and stacked stone and flagstone as, as the patio pavers. And it's a great look. It, it, it's kind of timeless. It, it reads very much like an outdoor kitchen. But if you wanted to do something a little softer, a little more elegant, using our custom finishes like the sage you see on the left, um, using some overlay panel units that you can do even outdoors 
really kind of accomplish some of these looks that, again, you haven't seen in an outdoor kitchen, allows our homeowners to have something a little more unique or, or kind of push that design envelope a little bit um, where they're accomplishing something that we haven't seen elsewhere. Great, beautiful, just beautiful. So tell us a little bit about these finishes. Tell us about Automotive Grave. One of the new colors you launched was Emerald, which I saw, which was really cool in an automotive grade and kind of what, what that means. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the the kind of squares you see up top there, those are our powder coated finishes. And in this image, it's a little hard to uh, see all the different colors, but we have our saffron, which is that bold yellow. We have an emerald color, which is a dark green, uh, cobalt, which is a bold blue. Then we have our juniper, sage, and bluestone finishes, which are those half neutrals I mentioned before. And then we have three different blacks and two different whites so that really a designer can do whatever they want. Those are like standard offering. That's kind of our curated collection of colors. If you ask us, that's kind of what our vision of what uh, current design looks like and what we see most used in kitchens out there. Uh, and then our hardware finishes. At the bottom, those three panels there, and again, it's real hard to see the colors uh, on this photo, but what it is, is it's actually automotive grade paint that we do ourselves. We have a paint booth, we're able to paint our units as opposed to just powder coating. It's a liquid paint process and we can actually achieve literally any automotive finish that is out there or match any other paint finish that is out there. So the green color that you're mentioning, uh, I think it's on the next slide. It's actually a British racing green that we did. It looked absolutely stellar. It has a really high sheen. You can kind of see that reflection coming off of it in the top corner of the unit. And it, it has a, a metal inclusion in the paint as well, just like a car finish would. So it really has the sparkle yeah. of a car finish and that really, really high gloss. You've never seen anything like it on an appliance before. It really is absolutely unique. Uh, and we're able to do this on any one of our units now. So it's a really cool process to bring in house. Um, you know, the team that does this for the, does this for us internally is extremely skilled. You know, these are, these are hand painted machines. Uh, and, and what they're able to do is just absolutely stunning. So if you wanted to, you know, we have customers that want to do this, you know, they want to bring in their Ferrari paint spec and they want to match that perfectly. We can absolutely do that. At the same time, if someone says, hey, I've got this Ferro and Ball paint color, I'm doing an ultra matte of this paint color, and we want to match that identically, we'll use that same paint booth to take that paint chip. We have our own uh, you know, lab where we do all of the color matching. We'll match both the, the color as well as the actual finish, so we can hit that super high gloss. We can hit those ultra mattes, and then we can match that adjacent cabinet or that adjacent wall without any notice whatsoever. I mean, they look perfect. So um, it's a hard task to achieve. It really takes some some craftsmanship. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely something we're proud of at the factory that we have those people on, on our team that can really achieve that because it isn't something you'll see every day. That's for sure. Yeah. And you, you had said that earlier. And I think it's important. It's funny. I was talking about this. I said, this could be a great blog topic coming off of COVID. Steven, the owner uh, who, who does a lot of the blogging, um, we were talking about, you know, this concept of American made, right? And, and I think COVID exposed a lot of that. There's like American assembled and then American made. And the one thing that, you know, true definitely, you saw a lot of companies that had you asked me, and there's a formula. I mean, technically, and I could be off slightly. It's something I was just researching though quite a bit, which is, to be labeled America, uh, made in America, I believe it's only 18% of the parts that you're using can be from overseas and the assembling needs to happen here in the US. But when we all heard American made before, we thought every single component was, was made in the US. True really shined in, in COVID is, while everyone had delays, right? Of course, because just labor was hard and business, just running the factories was hard enough. But True didn't have the traditional backlog of other brands and today still has even as custom as it is a pretty reasonable lead time because of everything you continue to touch on which is like that paint booth is yours your people in your own factory yeah. it is made in your own factory i mean talk about just that a little bit because i think coming out of COVID and with all the optics that that american made is a big thing again it always has been but it's certainly resurfaced and uh true true really is an american company so 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're still a family owned company. I mean, it really like if you look back at our history, it, it kind of has that almost uh, quintessential American story of started in the garage, you know, of a downtown St. Louis home and, um, and and continued to grow from there. And that's over 75 years ago. But we have remained vertically integrated as well and continue to bring more and more processes in house. Um, one of the amazing things I've seen, I've, I've been at True a little over 10 years now, is there, it, it, instead of looking for who can take over a process for us, we're actually bringing more and more processes in house. So like the glass doors on our refrigerators, we actually build the glass door assembly ourselves. We take the two panes of glass, we marry them up with a spacer, we charge them with the argon gas so that we get the best insulation possible. We build that into our own door. We bend all of our own stainless steel. It comes out of a giant coil of steel. We flatten it, cut it, bend it, weld it. That all happens, uh, again, uh, about 15 minutes away from where I'm sitting now in our in our St. Louis factory here. Um, it's just outside of St. Louis in O'Fallon, Missouri. And and we're really committed to that. Um, and I, I can tell you, I've done factory tours with customers before and gone through our factory, and they see each step of the way that we do that process ourselves, even down to building our own pallets. We physically build our own pallets out of wood that's harvested, you know, a couple hundred miles away in central Missouri and build our own pallets because we want our unit to arrive in perfect condition. And so we control that pallet ourselves. It seems like a small detail, but they all add up. And like you're saying during COVID, when people who are extremely reliant on uh, the foreign supply chain that had issues with the boats getting stuck in the LA Harbor and couldn't access componentry, um, or maybe they were too dependent on one or two of their suppliers who, you know, for whatever reason during COVID, we, we found a lot of weakness in the supply chain and it's still challenging. I won't say we didn't run into our own challenges, but we were just able to manage it a lot better because we had control of so many of those processes ourselves. Uh, and still to this day, I know that there's a lot of people kind of dealing with the hangover effects of, of COVID that still have supply chain challenges. And, and we've really kind of moved beyond that. Um, one of the things I was really excited that, you know, especially for our dealers and our customers uh, to be able to share is, is now on every single one of our product pages, we actually show the lead time that we expect for the re refrigerator that you'd be ordering, whether it's a right hinge or a left hinge, it's listed right there on the product page. And then even our custom finishes, even though those are built to order for each customer, it's a 12 week build time. So from start to finish, we're able to take care of that. That's our worst lead time right now is a custom finish order at, at, at around 12 or 13 weeks. So it's something we're really proud of. Um, and, and if anybody ever has walked through our factory, a lot of our dealers have come through and, and seen how they're built. And you can ask in the, in the stores really throughout the country, we've brought, we've brought our dealer salespeople back and had them see how we build everything. Cause it really makes a difference. Every time they leave, that's, that's the like resounding refrain that we hear out of everybody is like, wow, you do more of this than any other manufacturer I've ever seen. Um, you have more control over the process than any other manufacturer. And so we're really proud when when folks leave our factory and, and share that with us and say what a difference it makes to them. And again, to partners like you, Dennis, and, and the other dealers throughout the country, when we say like, hey, that's going to be delivered in four weeks to the to the dealer partner who's going to be doing that installation for you, it needs to be four weeks. There's an expensive construction schedule. You know, there's contractors depending upon it, painters and trim finishers and everybody else. We can't be holding up our customers that way. So it's it's so important for us to be as as transparent as possible with what our availability is. Yeah, so, so we, it, we've really tried to do it. If you're if you're somebody doing a project this year, I mean, the three major other major premium built in refrigeration. 11 months, indefinite, and indefinite. And even when you talk about under-counter units right now, there's certain major brands you can't even place an order for. And here we're talking to True, and they're 12 weeks for a custom finish uh, with the refrigerator you saw. So um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a cool thing to see really what a truly American-made can do and how fast it can be. So kudos to True for that. 
Yeah, yeah last question. Well, and it's it's fun to be uh, fun to see it, and it's something we're real proud of. That's for sure. Yeah, pretty incredible. At Twelve weeks, no question. Final question here: Holiday prep. Should we talk about this now? You know, we're just out of the holidays uh, coming up over the last six weeks or so. Anything customers should be doing for the prep for next year's holidays? I mean, I think this is uh, it's it's the perfect time for reflection. Uh, we were just talking about this, uh, you, you know, as a team, we were looking at what just happened in the holidays. What did we hear from our customers? I think there's a lot of customers, like you said, Dennis, who, you know, got surprised by some extra long lead times, um, you know, whether that be from their contractor or from their, you know, uh, an appliance vendor or somebody else where they wanted to have a project done before the holidays. So I think if, if, if anyone out there looks at their holiday that they just had and they're like, you know, we just didn't have enough space to be able to do X, Y, and Z, or we wanted to host because, you know, um, it, it's really our turn and we need to step up to the plate and we want to start being the destination for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. Uh, and we want to start having our family there. Maybe you're empty nesters now and you really want a place where the kids are excited to come back uh, and, and spend some time and maybe bring the grandkids, you know, um, if you're not thinking about it now, um, we're going to miss the season, uh, you know, and I, I know it might seem crazy to talk about, but I think we have a lot of homeowners who kind of kind of mark Thanksgiving as like the project has to be done yeah. so I can cook Thanksgiving in my new kitchen. And so if they're not talking about it right now, if they're not if they're not looking at their plan, sitting down with their designer and starting to move on that immediately, there's no hope for it. So I think, uh, you know, that's uh, that's why we had it uh, listed as something to. Take take stock of what just occurred. What did you love about the holidays? Did you did you wish you had a wine cabinet? Did you wish you had a place, a lounge, maybe a home bar to sit down with your friends and throw a couple extra holiday parties? Um, or or what what did you need in the home? It, it really is kind of crazy to talk about it now, but it's it's time to talk about it if you're talking about remodeling. Cool. Well, I, I'll say this: this one this was definitely our longest episode, but I but I think to do the brand um, justice and to talk about some of the customizations and things they do, you have to, it's going to run a bit longer. Um, it's exciting to us again, to just have a, a brand that's, that's continuing to innovate through challenging times and it's best times are probably ahead of it and continues to build quality product that we can be proud of, that they can be proud of. Um, and really is at the heart of your home. We've talked a lot about entertaining and those spaces. And honestly, I, Coming out of, we continue to talk about coming out of what we just came out of. And in, in general, always, you know, the kitchen, these entertaining, these holidays we talk about, they're the heart of the home. They really are. They're the things you remember. They're all you take with you. And 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 we see on the backside of COVID people really wanting to do some things differently. And True definitely, uh, you know, kind of embodies that because everything they do is, is different. So... Uh, it was really great to have Andrew on. We appreciate his time. And, and, and Fran, as always, you did a great job. So thanks for being here, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Really awesome. appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I know we're super excited to see some of these the newer colors and and uh, products coming into the store. You know, we kind of we did our over the last year kind of true displays in really all of our showrooms and showcase a lot of what you can do and some of the cool colors that are out there today. So we're really excited to kind of see the new stuff too coming out. And I know it's been, uh, like we said, it's been truly a brand that's grown a lot through color. As you, you know, as you said, you were expecting five to 10%. I can absolutely attest that we're in that 50% ballpark there. I mean, we see that the majority of these things now are custom colors and people are just amazed and really kind of inspired with what they can do in their kitchen and bar areas, outdoor areas. I mean, there's just so much there. So we're really excited for it and uh, really glad you could join the show this week. Well, awesome. thanks guys. I really appreciate the time and uh, it's, it's been fun for sure. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, thanks again, Fran, sign us off. What thanks do we have everybody. coming up, Fran? Do we have anything coming up to, to talk about? What do we got? We got vacations coming up, the two we of do. us. We do. So we'll throw out some that. dates here, but we do have some great guests coming on. We have Ryan Bloom from Urban Bonfire coming on to join us soon, too. So we'll throw those out there, kind of the dates, and you'll see some more. So definitely check in and like and then subscribe to our channels. Check our LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram. I will have a lot of information for you there in upcoming episodes. And we have a lot of really great guests coming up like Ryan Bloom from our Urban Bonfire. So we're excited for those. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, See, you. See you next time. Thanks, y'all. Take care.